from stepping on to new unexplored lands to becoming merciless, gold-hungry predators. The Spanish conquistadors have left quite the bloody mark on history, bringing with them only the most advanced weapons of that time and leaving with ships filled with gold and entire cultures and civilizations destroyed. Join us today as we uncover the unspeakable acts the Spanish conquistadors committed against the indigenous people of the New World, shedding light on the grim realities of death, suppression, and other unimaginable horrors. As we embark on this dangerous journey, let us retrace the initial steps. Columbus's colonization of the Atlantic Islands marked the beginning of an era of aggressive Spanish expansion across the Atlantic. They were driven by dreams of riches and the appeal of new territories. The conquistadors' initial motives and orders were rooted in a mix of establishing trade routes and the spreading of Christianity. They sought to secure the flow of valuable resources, such as gold, silver, and spices, back to Spain, and at the same time were armed with the belief of saving souls and converting the indigenous populations to Christianity. They believed that their conquests were divine missions, whereas some would have called them a hunger for religious power and control. However, as the New World unveiled its untapped potential, the unfulfilling greed of the conquistadors took hold transforming their noble intentions into a ruthless pursuit of power and wealth. We will first start off with one of the most renowned and first conquistadors, Hernán Cortés, whose fateful expedition in 1519 led to the downfall of the mighty Aztec Empire. In 1504, Cortés and his band of conquistadors landed on the shores of Mexico, ready to stake their claim. He had around 530 European soldiers, a few 100 other men, and slaves along with the best European war weaponry, which included cannons, guns, war horses, and dogs. Their arrival was not welcomed with open arms, because Aztecs, led by the legendary Emperor Montezuma, viewed the Spaniards with suspicion and apprehension, and rightfully so. Cortez's initial triumph in the New World came with the capture of an area called Potonchan, where he was given slaves, men for his army, and around 20 women, out of which Malinali Malinche would prove to be exceptionally valuable. Due to her fluency in both the native language and the language of the Spaniards, she would quickly emerge as a crucial translator during the military conquests. In 1519, Hernán Cortés set foot in Tenochtitlan, the grand capital of the Aztec Empire. He had gathered a huge army, not just including European men, but now mostly consisting of Aztecs and natives. The majestic temples and the sprawling gardens they encountered left them in awe. However, their fascination soon turned to horror as they witnessed the Aztec practice of human sacrifice, a sight that outrightly clashed with their own beliefs. This practice, alongside cannibalism, was considered a part of a tribute to be paid to the Aztec from neighboring peoples, but also for human sacrifice to their gods. These cultural practices were perceived as barbaric by the Spaniards and fueled their belief in the necessity of taking over the lands and spreading Christianity among the indigenous people, which led them to view themselves as agents of moral righteousness. But it was the legendary Aztec wealth and gold that ignited a relentless obsession within the Spanish conquistadors. Montezuma had also sent gifts of gold to Cortes, in a custom to the Aztec tradition of hospitality. Cortes saw the goal and wanted more. Driven by greed, Cortes hatched a plan to seize control over the city and its riches. The Siege of Tenochtitlan. The Spaniards had been given lodgings in a palace, however, after a few days, they noticed their vulnerable position and became restless. The natives could easily kill them whenever they desired. Soon, Cortes found his men in a near panic and in order to restore faith in the mission, a decision had to be made. Cortes and Montezuma met on the 14th of November for one of their regular discussions. But this time, Cortes brought around 30 men and subtly took Montezuma captive. However, soon after, Cortes had to leave the capital to deal with a rival European ship, leaving his least reliable soldiers under the command of Pedro de Alvarado to guard Montezuma. Right after Cortes left, a threatening tension surrounded the city. The once hospitable Mexica no longer considered the Spaniards as mere guests. As the city prepared itself, 
a fateful moment approached during the celebration of the Feast of Toxcatol. Over time, a sense of paranoia seemed to consume Alvarado. Fueled by his own suspicions, he resorted to capturing and torturing citizens, desperate for answers regarding any signs of a potential revolt. Yet the forced answers and faulty translations only served to reinforce Alvarado's fear of an attack and a terrifying prospect of being sacrificed. Convinced that striking first was the only option, he made a chilling decision. The day of the festival arrived, and little did the unsuspecting onlookers know, the temple grounds would soon become a sinister stage. Alvarado and his troops discreetly positioned themselves strategically amidst the festival goers and the exits were quietly blocked off. Then, in a single moment, they shattered the tranquility. Alvarado's commanding voice boomed, Let them die! The swords were unsheathed and chaos erupted. The once celebratory atmosphere quickly turned into a blood-soaked nightmare. 3,000 lives were mercilessly ended and the killing spilled out into the streets. The Aztec nobility, the pillars of their society, lay dead, while Moctezuma and a few fortunate souls managed to escape. Madness gripped the city as the Mexica, fueled by grief and fury, organized a desperate counterattack. It was only when Alvarado, despite starting the chaos, compelled Moctezuma to address his own people and pleaded for a ceasefire. The Spaniards retreated into their quarters, hiding themselves from the mourning city. Meanwhile, Cortes had returned to Tenochtitlan, victorious from the battle against the rival European ship, absorbing most of the enemy soldiers into his own army. Unbeknownst to the Spanish, the people of Tenochtitlan had rallied behind Moctezuma's brother, Quiactalahac. Faced with overwhelming odds, Cortes and his army devised a strategic plan to surround the city. The Spaniards possessed a formidable arsenal, armed with steel swords, muskets, cannons, and crossbows. In contrast, the Aztecs could only respond with wooden broadswords, clubs, and spears tipped with obsidian blades. Furthermore, the Spanish were well trained in various battle tactics, making use of combined arms applications. Additionally, Cortes had also forged crucial alliances on his way back with 200,000 native warriors from other regions. With the combined force now surrounding Tlactalan, the city became completely sealed off subjected to a relentless siege from May 22nd through August 13th, 1521. The Aztec resistance gradually weakened under the relentless pressure. The Spaniards began to gradually turn the tide against the empire, and the once mighty city of Tenochtitlan started to crumble under the weight of the siege. As the siege continued, another horrifying event took place, one that would forever change the course of history. Disease, as a silent enemy, began to ravage both Cortez's allies and the Aztec population. Among the diseases that took hold, historians have long believed that smallpox, measles, and mumps, to which the natives had no natural immunity, spread rapidly among the Aztecs. Meanwhile, Cortez's men also suffered from malaria, yellow fever, and other illnesses, further exasperating the devastation on both sides. As the siege grew stronger, the Aztec bodies began to gather in vast numbers, forming haunting piles in the streets. The decaying corpses further acted as breeding grounds for additional diseases, worsening the already dire situation. Cut off from the sustenance and facing a catastrophic loss of life, the remaining Aztecs, including the royal family, found themselves at the brink of defeat. In the face of such suffering, they ultimately accepted the harsh reality of their situation, marking the beginning of a long and tumultuous era of Spanish rule over Mexico, Central America, and large parts of South America. The toll of the siege and the ravages of disease were staggering. Estimates suggest that Cortes and his men were responsible for the deaths of as many as 100,000 individuals, either through direct combat or illness. This dual devastation, inflicted upon the indigenous populations, left a destructible mark on the history of the region, forever altering its cultural and social landscape. As the waves of the conquest surged across the New World, another name rose to prominence, Francisco Pizarro. Driven by the hunger for wealth and titles, Pizarro ventured into the Spanish Caribbean in 1509. In 1532, an extremely important moment unfolded as Atahualpa ascended to the throne. 
becoming the emperor of the Inca Empire. Sensing an opportunity, Pizarro set his sights on this legendary realm of gold and embarked on his attack. Pizarro and his men captured Atahualpa. Desperate to secure his freedom, Atahualpa made a staggering offer, an entire room filled with gold and silver as ransom. The Incans worked diligently for months, collecting the wealth. However, the conqueror's intentions were far from honorable. Despite the Incans delivering the promised ransom, Pizarro had other plans. He condemned Atahualpa as a heretic and ordered his execution. However, the conquistadors falsely promised salvation if Atahualpa embraced Christianity, which the emperor did, believing that conversion would spare his life. Tragically, the Spanish once again shattered their word, strangling Atahualpa to death leaving him betrayed in his final moments. As the dust settled on the conquests of the Incas and Aztecs, the world mourned the irreversible loss of its rich past. The indigenous populations had been decimated by genocide, disposed of their lands, and stripped of their cultural heritage. The conquistadors, driven by their insatiable quest for gold, glory, and God, left a mark of devastation in their wake. The conquerors went to great lengths to erase all non-Christian imprints from these societies, eradicating their books, architecture, and way of life. Their vibrant cities fell into ruin, forced conversion into Catholicism shattered their ancestral beliefs, and their languages faded away. Just the arrival alone of the Spaniards in the New World spelled catastrophe for indigenous populations. Carrying diseases to which they had no immunity, the native people were ravaged by devastating epidemics, their numbers dwindling at an alarming rate. Testimonies from the conquistadors themselves and missionary friars like Bartolome de las Casas revealed the true extent of the cruelty inflicted upon the indigenous people. They were subjected to unspeakable acts of mutilation, rape, and murder, with little to no consequences for their tormentors. The conquest of the New World forever changed the course of human history. It was a period marked by unimaginable suffering, greed-driven atrocities, and the clash of cultures. This video just includes the glimpses of horrors endured by the indigenous people. A sharp reminder of the depths of human cruelty and the devastating consequences of unchecked power. As we reflect upon this painful chapter in history, let us strive to honor and preserve the memory of these lost civilizations, ensuring that their stories are not forgotten. And so, we come to the end of this video, but our exploration doesn't end here. Join us next time as we delve further into discovering the truth from the torn pages of history.